Charlie, I'm super pleased tonight to receive one of my, you know, one of the, the guitar players that, you know, that I'm addicted to the to the band since a, you know, big decade. So, hello, Jeff. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Yeah, thank you for being part of the show. You know, I'm I'm more than happy, you know, to have you in and to talk. Um, to yeah, I'm very happy to be here. Yeah. So, so, so actually, I, I was I was just telling you I saw you guys last year, you know, in uh, in Belfort, and uh, it was like a freaking good show, and uh, that was, you know, one of the best uh, Smashing Pumpkins live show I, I've seen in my opinion. So uh, yeah, and it must have been. For, I, I mean, it. I think it was the only show in France you guys were playing. If my memory. Yeah, was I think so. Yeah, yeah, um, and that. You know, this last summer was just such a, a pleasure for me because, I mean, we played Europe many times, but that was maybe the first time in, I don't know, in, in 10 years or so since um, we were playing at some of those festivals. And the first time I did it was in 2007 when I first joined the band and I was, I'd never played shows, festival shows like that before in my life. And it was, I was just so nervous and, and just trying to not make mistakes and just do play the best I could. I couldn't really enjoy the festival experience because it was, you know, hard to hear on stage and just, you know, I just wasn't prepared for the moment. And then, so I, when I saw that we we're playing a lot of these festivals and, and um, I just was so excited because I, I told myself, you know, I, after playing, you know, probably, I don't know how many shows I've played with, five or 600 shows with the band. You know, now I'm gonna go, I said, I'm gonna enjoy this experience because as this moment tells it, you never know when it could be taken away, when it's gonna come back. And so you really have to enjoy each moment. And I had such a great time. And, and as we were kind of talking off camera, we got to play with so many cool bands. And, and so festivals are really fun because it's just when you go and have lunch or dinner and catering you don't know who you're going to be sitting next to yeah <laughs> and, so, right. yeah, and suddenly yeah. you feel like more Stanley yeah. coming up <laughs> you know, so. yeah yeah and it's totally fun <laughs> you know and and the band is playing really good I think kind of technology has helped us the whole band I mean I know some people they don't love them but I certainly do is the whole band now we're on in-ears and especially playing those bigger stages outdoor like now I, I can hear especially our drummer, Jimmy Chamberlain, he plays so many complex beats and so many syncopations between the hi-hat and ride. Before on those, I could, sometimes you could hear, sometimes you couldn't. Now it's like, I can hear exactly what he's playing. I can hear what Billy's playing. I can hear, I mean, it's, it's like literally playing along with the record. Mm -hmm. And um, so I think that really helps us play live. I think we're so much tighter than we used to be. I'm sure you could, I mean, you were there. So, you know, yeah. that, you know, we play much tighter mm -hmm. and, and I think also technology in terms of guitar rigs and 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 being able to use kind of hybrid between digital products and analog stuff. Um, I mean, we're able to kind of replicate a lot of the sounds um, from the records before. So it, I think it as a as a, a kind of overall experience, it's it's just a lot more fun to play. And did you have like a, a band that you always wanted to see or that you were excited to see like last summer? Like I, I for us in Europe, you know, we were super excited to see Tool coming back uh, and Kiss was coming back as well, which was like one of the best show ever I, I, I've ever seen. I, I saw you were in an interview um, with a friend of our of ours, you know, Captain Anderson in the UK. You, oh, yeah, yeah. You were yeah. a big fan with, with um, you were a big fan of Kiss when you started. Oh. Uh, playing guitar that's what you know brought uh, you in uh, the guitar world pretty much I, I am a huge so and on and I did April and one night we had an off night and Kiss was doing a, their own show so in actually in Germany in Berlin we got to go to see just a, a yeah. you know we, we played with them I think at, at Donnie or what it what do they call it monsters of is it monsters of rock uh, what's it called now uh, uh, hammering maybe uh, that download festival which used oh yeah to be monsters are but so we played with them there but then but we had actually an offer where i could just go in to see the whole show and so oh. of course i love to see kiss you know what i mean kisses yeah always will be like one of my favorites but yeah i think ace freely was 
definitely my earliest inspiration. I mean, I was born in 1974 and my brother is eight years older than me. And so by 77, 78, he was, you know, 11, 12, he was a KISS fanatic. And so around our house, we had just KISS records, KISS posters, KISS playing on the stereo all the time. So I very quickly identified with Ace Freeland and said, you know what? I want to be that. I don't know, there's something about, he just looks cool, the guitar, you know, the whole deal. So I really, um, I, I just always wanted to play guitar. I don't know what inspired me because no one in my family was a musician, mm -hmm. you know, but I think that that between Kiss and kind of early MTV, all that, you know, 83, you know, Quiet Riot and Rat and all these bands started coming in, they all had just phenomenal guitar players and I think that really inspired me to pick up the instrument. And talking about guitars, you, you were you were talking off camera about the, the, the Yamaha Pacifica that you had custom made it seems for you? Or... Yeah, 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 this is it's totally custom because um, I mean if the body shape actually is a little different than the current production model, the the contours are completely different, um, it has a lot of a lot of things that aren't you know, I think that they're they're kind of working on some redesigns, I think. And so I think they're kind of what I was able to to uh, have you. the benefit. Yeah. <laughs> of, of getting from that. So there's there's that. Um, and if you see actually like the neck joint is very much like kind of which a lot of guitar companies do. It's beveled here and has yeah. no no back plate, which is. So access to the, it's, I mean, I can't believe it took this long for the industry to start incorporating this kind of stuff in mm -hmm. newer guitars. Now, when you play like a guitar that doesn't have this, it just feels like, oh my gosh, like what I'm, you can't even get up past the 17th fret or anything like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this is, so they built me this one. I mean, I, so I have basically, like I was telling you, we have, I have four of these and they're kind of my main guitars now that I will okay. use live with the pumpkins. Okay. Uh, so, so of course, along with other things here and there, but I, you know, I made a, I made a transition when I first joined the band. I was just a poor, struggling musician. I was actually, you know, I was getting my doctorate at in at in literature, at, you know, at, at um, UCLA in Los Angeles, and so I was just a starving graduate student, you know, and on my way to academic life. And then once I got in the band, I, I only had, I only owned like maybe two or two guitars, maybe, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> you know, like one, a Telecaster, a jazz master, and I had, I had like a, a, a Strat too. And um, so then when I joined the band, I all of a sudden got all these guitars because, wow. you know, like I had to get Les Pauls and SGs and all these things. Cause I, you know, and I never played those. I never had, I never owned a Les Paul in my life. Yeah, and but you so, had to get them. <laughs> well, yeah, because Billy was like, well, for these songs, you're going to have to cover these kind of sounds. And, you know, he always, you know, but in back then, especially not, not, not as much these days, but back then, you know, he was always playing Spenders. Yeah. And so kind of that early pumpkin sound is the, the Strat and the Les Paul kind of together creates that sound. And so I started playing, you know, and then I got really excited. I'm like, wow, I have all these guitars. I have a guitar tech. I wanted to switch guitars every song because I could, and, you know what I mean? Nobody but dreams about it, right? <laughs> yeah, but then once I really started to focus in and, and care about my playing more and get better and then really look at the kind of the true greats, most guys don't switch guitars. If they're, you know, like player players don't like to switch guitars that much. Yeah. And I get it because you want to really play with precision and consistency, if you're switching necks and scale lengths from 25 and a half to 24 and, the, and three quarters, you know what I mean? The, and, you know, body shift, it's, it's, it's harder to play consistent. I, for myself, you know, I found that. So I, so I really started to, um, and as I developed a longer relationship with Yamaha, they were starting to like, it kind of build me more what I, like things that I wanted. I really kind of worked for a few years to try and find like, well, what are the different components that I would need to be able to play any type of song from the catalog and get from, you know, because obviously our bread and butter is you, if, if you're going to have a guitar, it's got to sound good distorted. Yeah. But, you know, pumpkins, but, it, but you still have to be able to play clean too. And so to be able to get good, clean sounds, excellent distortion sounds, uh, you know, 
obviously stay in tune, uh, play how I want it to play, all those things. You know, it, it took a little bit of trial and error. And then once I, I really started looking at like some of the players that inspired me, of course, you Cohen, I would do deep dives. And then, so I'm, I'm a very much a guitar, you know, like I'm very into it. So then I would go and have like my local luthier put together kind of parts guitars that had elements of like what Van Halen did. And then I would, yeah. you know, so then I could see what it was that attracted them to those types of pickups or tremolo bars or whatever. And uh, yeah, and so over time, I kind of found the things that I liked and then that's basically what's, yes. you know. Yeah, yeah, and I and I love it, and of course I I I love like the ridiculous color and stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know I, I, mean? I, you know, I can't even you know give a name to that color. I've never seen that in in like the classic you Fender did. or Gibsons or PRS or. You know who I I actually did a uh a, a interview the other day with Scotty Hill from Skid Row. <laughs> you know, for, and he and he, you know, he knows a lot about guitar too. He's a, he's a great guy, and um, he's become a friend of mine out here in LA, and uh, we hang out from time to time. And he called it emergency orange. That's a good <laughs> so I, I feel like you know that that's a that's a good that's a good. Uh, so are we going to see like the the emergency orange guitar on, on tour? Because I, you know, after the pandemic, we hope to see you guys back, of course, right? And you have uh, we are going to talk about it. The, the new album coming in two weeks uh, out. Um, so are you, are we going to see that guitar? You oh, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Um, this one, and I'll grab the kind of the other one real quick yeah, too. Sure. It's kind of my other main one, um, which is 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 this one. Um, this is kind of like, I really love, like this one sounds phenomenal. I mean, the, the orange one sounds really, really good. Like I really, I mean, and I probably play it more because um, it was the first one I got and I've just, it's, it's like really hard for me to replace it. Um, but this one I got recently cause I was, it was supposed to get it this year because we we're gonna play all summer with, we we're gonna do some stadium shows with Guns N' Roses and, and stuff. So. That's why they built me two more so I could have four, two E and two E flat. Um, and this one actually has an alder body where that orange one has a, a, you know, a base wood body, which our basswood, I'm sorry, basswood body. And, and it's like, it's pretty subtle. You know what I mean? It's yeah, not, yeah. But, but the biggest difference is that I noticed because I have three that don't have the sustainiac and what, the sustainiac, because the, the signal is always running through that circuit and it kind of does something to the, takes just the edge off the attack just a little bit because it's running through that circuit board. Yeah. You know, you never can truly bypass it for the way that it works. And, um, and I do love it. And so I love like what it can do, but uh, I don't use, I, I notice that the ones that don't have it just have a little more bite, a little more attack. Okay, great. So, so yeah, I'm going with you uh, uh, as well. So you have two in that color again, and uh, again, like a, like a color we can't even. Is that like a Fender would call it burgundy mist, but it's more yeah. Green. I think it's like a champagne. They call it champagne mist, burgundy mist. I, I, I you know some people call it pink. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it's like I, I mean. We call it Vinnie Vincent Pink. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. I, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just kidding. You know, it's I remember, not as pink as yeah. I remember the you know the flying V Vinnie was playing with Kiss, and I think it was black originally, and he painted in painting the pink over black or whatever. You well, know? yeah, he had one that was like gold sparkle too, which was really yeah. cool. And then, but then when he went and did his own band, the video, everything was just black and pink. <laughs> yeah, right. I think he repainted the one he was playing with Kiss and he repainted pink. And uh, I saw, I saw yeah. it in auction recently or something like that. And the story was crazy cool about it. But, and do yeah, yeah. you, you got, you, you're showing like some, some modernistic guitar, if we if we call it this way. Do are you also sometimes using vintage stuff, or are you? Yeah, yeah. And I was going to show you. I brought my kind of my main vintage. I don't take. I probably won't take this out on the road anymore. But I use this and this. I use either on the new Pumpkins record. I actually have another Yamaha guitar that is a that I should show you. That's a kind of a prototype 
guitar. I don't know if they're ever going to come out with these, but um, but it was either that guitar or, and I have this one, I put it right here. This is, I have this uh, 72 wow. Les Paul Deluxe with mini humbuckers. And I mean, yeah, I know you can't see it through Zoom, but it has like the one year 72. Ah, yeah, with the gift logo. Yeah, and it's crazy cool, man. I just had this plug and this guitar sounds phenomenal. Yeah. I mean, it just sounds, cause I was, you know, we were on the road and I was that, you know, uh, this was in 2015. Um, and I was listening to a lot of Thin Lizzy, mm -hmm. you know, and they always use the deluxe. And, and, and then, I, and I, then I'm also into that band, um, Noi, you know, the German Krautrock yeah. band and Michael Roth was a guitar player in that band. And so I would think, and he always had the gold top, deluxe the deluxe with the mini humbuckers and so i said oh, i gotta get one of those and um so i called uh chicago music exchange we were, we were on tour and i said i called you know my friend that works there and uh i said do you have any deluxes and he goes yeah we haven't put this one out on the floor yet it just kind of came in he's like i played it he's like it sounds pretty good you know it sounds really good and um and so i just bought it you know and it was and so, I, and then they sent it out to me and it had a lot of problems. It, it like the frets were popping out. And, yeah. and so then I, you know, it was barely playable, you know, for um, the rest of the tour, but you know, it sound, I knew I was like, wow, it sounds great. So I took it to my, I, I live in LA now, but I, at the time I still lived in Chicago. I sent it to, I took it to my local luthier and he's amazing. This guy, Jeff Ben, he's just really, really just old school, you know yeah like the and, magician luthier that the wizards that yeah and, and he's and he just know like he does the best setups like you get a guitar back from him and he just as a player he just knows like exactly mm -hmm. how to set up a guitar and he took and he said well he's like all right he's like i can make this play amazing wow. and and so he actually took the neck out and reset oh, it really whoa yeah he, you know so what they do is they pull the frets up and they drill and then they put a, a steamer to steam the glue and then they you know pull the neck out oh. and, re and and then he refretted it and it's i mean the actions like ridiculously low and no buzzing no fret outs and and he and the the pickups were pretty microphonic and we play with a lot of high gain so he lightly potted the pickups and it's just i think even potting the pickups can sometimes make them sound even a little bit better like a little bit tighter mm -hmm. and and yeah, it just has a very unique sound. It's, it's just, the clarity is, is really clear. You know, and I, I plug this in and I compare it to like kind of these kind of more modern super strat type of guitar with like very high output pickups and stuff. And, you know, yeah. this is, you know, they don't, it, 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 it's, you know, it's just two different things, you know, two different, two different beasts. But yeah, this guitar is, 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 is really cool. And I like it because, I have a couple like really nice custom shop sunburst ones, more like Jimmy, uh, one that looks like the tobacco, looks like yeah, Ace, really al stuff. Ace Really Alive. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I got the ones that, the ones with the 60s neck with a little bit thinner profile. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but they're basically the R9, but with the 60s neck. Yeah. So I have one tobacco and one ice tea burst that's just very, you know, Jimmy Page. And they sound phenomenal. And I put the whole lot of humbuckers in there and it just has that. You play yeah. it through an old Marshall, it has that that sound like whatever Kiss, Zeppelin, UFO kind of vibe. But I just, you know, over time, like I, I don't play like how I really play, mm -hmm. you know, on it. Like it, like for some of I just end up one of them wanting to play Zeppelin licks and more more bluesy than I want. <laughs> you know what I mean, like it just sounds like sounds just sound just sounds good. But Jazz is this coming. guitar, <laughs> this guitar, you can still kind of rip on it and play fast and and it has a lot you know it doesn't feel like is is blues bait i don't know it it's just all in my mind because it's a less ball but in my mind it doesn't feel as blues based it's it's more it's more arty and neutral so you know, I, yeah, I know well, it's great. when i see a, a deluxe you know i always think about scott goran with you know the hurley yeah of course yeah like even i think even haze freely is the you know the one he he quite modified like the any 
I think he yeah. painted thousands of shows in Kiss, and uh, and I think he painted it black afterward, and it was. And so then he cut, he cut it like made it like a double yeah. cutaway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was. I think you're right. It started as a deluxe. Yeah, he started. Uh, I think it was like a tobacco sunburst yes. deluxe. Yeah, and he even brought it. Uh, yeah, I think he even modified it slightly and he, to have a, a better access in the in the high notes. I think he even you know. Um, Oh yeah, back here. I think he they did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he yeah, did him, yeah. He himself, yeah. which is like crazy and I hate crazy. I, I know. One of the I most active guitar player back then. Yeah, yeah, and I guess back you know you know there wasn't as many options as there is. So if you wanted to do something, you just had to do it yourself, right? Yeah, yeah, like yeah. like Van Halen did, you know, and all those guys. Yeah. And so did you did you use that deluxe on on the new record? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's either that guitar or, and I'll grab the the last one. So it's the deluxe or, um, or yeah, oh, wow. or this guitar, which is a. And I think there was a little bit of, you know, last year or the year before, you know, some internet stuff. We're like, what are these guitars James and Jeff are playing? You know, who makes these? You know, and um, there, there's like a Yamaha made this. It's a proto a prototype of a of a guitar there. I don't, I don't know if they're ever going to come out with it, you know what I mean? But they, they, they said, Hey, if we build you a couple of these, could you take them out on the road and play them? And, and, you know, Why not? and uh, <laughs> yeah. And so I said, of course. And, um, and so I got like a, a few and then they said, I, I asked, I wanted another one. And so they built me the, and so I said, but I wanted to make a few modifications. So they put the roasted maple neck, Okay. On this one, uh, and I, you know, and I think they were doing all stainless, but I wanted jumbo stainless steel frets, and um, and then I and I wanted three single coils, basically. But these are stacked. These are the Seymour Duncan YJM. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And man, they they are phenomenal pickups. Yeah. I don't know if you've ever. Yeah, they sound really good. And so this guitar has just a lot of just a ton of clarity and just enough. I mean, it doesn't really, I, you know, I was a, at first I was a little bit, I didn't know what to make it. Cause it doesn't sound super stratty. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not, yeah. it's, it's pretty rock, you know, it has like a, a, a big, kinda, yeah. yeah, but it doesn't sound like a regular humbucker though at all. So it has its own kind of unique character, but certain guitars um, just have, I mean, especially when you're recording, you know, it, it's just how they sit in the mix. Yeah. And, and, it, and it's usually pretty, like, it, it, you know, when you're sitting there trying different guitars, it, it, it's just very quick. Like you're like, it's just there. And so, and I found that a guitar that by itself may sound great, doesn't always sound good in a song, in a mix. And I think what distinguishes this guitar and the deluxe is that they're actually not the widest sounding guitars, you know, they don't have as much low end as you think, but in a record, especially a, a rock record with this, with kick drum and thundering bass, like mm -hmm. you don't, it's, that's fighting frequencies, you know? But so this, yeah, this guitar and that guitar sound great. And, and I have to say, Billy got through an auction, he bought KK Downing's number oh. one 50 watt Marshall. Oh, wow. And, and so I use that combination a lot. And so this guitar, you know, and I would actually double a lot of the synth lines that were taking place with this guitar and that amp. And it created like this kind of hybrid thing where you would, can't really tell what it, so it doesn't sound like, oh, there's not a lot of guitar in this, but there is sometimes, but it's just like that, that amp, that guitar doubling synths and stuff. It And it, it just kind of created this very unique sound and yeah, but that amp, like this guitar and that amp, like, I mean, I was, yeah, I was, I was like, I gotta, fi I, like, uh. I gotta figure out, like, you could, you could see why it was his number one Marshall. It just had that. Yeah. And it's funny because I, I was bidding yeah. on that amp for the shop. So you can oh, yeah, be yeah, like yeah, bidding yeah. on it. <laughs> yeah. And he got the pedal board too. Uh, I I, di I didn't you know I didn't win anything at, at that auction because yeah. they were like and I think there were like two V's 
that KK, uh, you know, played uh, all, all like his career with Judas Priest. And I think one went like number one went for like 300 K or something. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's, that's what got Billy into it. He was like, I want, you know, he texted me because I want to get KK's V. <laughs> and then I think with the, once the pride, he was like, well, I don't want it. That, maybe I don't want it that bad. You know what I mean? Which was shot. I don't think it, you know, and, and good for KK that it went for so much, but I, I think, it was pretty shocking how much it went for. Well, yeah, I was like, really? <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Buy yeah, a fifty-nine yeah. less four for that. <laughs> so, so. But, yeah, but, but that's so that's obviously a, as obviously a super fan probably bought it. You know, yeah, I, who, and I met the guy after what bought it. You know, he's a he's a customer of mine, and uh, he said like, oh yeah, I got this. So you're like, okay, you know. Wow! Oh, if wow. you want to see the guitar one day, I got I know the guy who bought the two V finally. Ah, oh, that's so cool. Okay, next time we come to is he in France? Is he? He's very close from from us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh my god! Okay, next time we come out there, we have to for sure. I got to go to your shop and see all the all the cool stuff. You yeah, have. you know, and, and we we also our our pleasure is to keep some instrument for ourselves because we we are guitar players before being sure sure shop. and so. Uh, we also lend guitars to to musicians like like you to play on stage. So if you want to play like a fifty nine Les Paul for a couple of songs, you get it. You know, I, just... I did. Uh, you know, I might take you up on because like I've never had a chance to 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 you know that's that kind of the holy grail, right? Of that's yeah. one of the holy grail. You know, Billy's had he's I don't I think he may have sold them, but he had some fifty straps. Yeah. And so I got to play those and get to see like okay, that's cool. You know, but I, I've yet to try the 59 Les Paul. So. There you go. You know, when when you guys are coming back in in, uh, in Paris, you know, you you got it. You, we yeah, yeah, love I'd then, love to. Yeah, it's called Spa. You can check it on, on Instagram. But uh, yeah, we post some pictures of it, uh, you know, sometimes. And uh, it's crazy, you know. But uh, <laughs> let's talk about, about the record because I, I listened it, uh, you know, the, the past few days to have the, the full vibes. Uh -huh. Oh, did you? Yeah go about the writing process how did that happen because uh um you know it's so um you know versatile and the songs are like pff, some things that you just take in your face and yeah. heavy re guitar rift and i noticed the the combination of guitar uh, and uh, synthesizer uh you know yeah. uh, that we're doing the same thing on songs so how did you come up with the the writing process for for that album this year well i give it maybe like a, a little more context because, you know, the a year in 2018, we came out with Shiny No So Bright Volume 1, which was produced by Rick Rubin. Yeah. And that was a bit of a, you know, a, a happy accident because we weren't planning on making a record. And it's barely a record for us. We, we kind of wanted to release it maybe as two EPs or something because it, doesn't really make a cohesive statement in the way that a regular Smashing Pumpkins record would, but in this day and age of, you know, selling physical product, you know, the record label is like, please, can we just release it as one thing because it's too hard to, you know, sell multiple yeah. releases, you know, be confusing for people, you know, so we put it together, but the idea was really only to record James, well, basically, James had, is, was coming back and we had announced the tour and the Live Nation, the promoter was like, oh, it would be wonderful if you guys could have a new song that we could help use to promote the tour because it would just, you know, a bit talking point, some excitement. We said, sure, that sounds great. Let's, you know, and so uh, we got together in LA and started demoing songs and we went to a studio and demoed like 15 ideas, you mm -hmm. know, just over a couple of weeks because we said, you know what, let's just just have fun and play and just record a bunch of ideas. So we took those ideas to Rick's studio and we're supposed to have just a week at his studio to record one song. Wow. So we get there the first day and he listens to everything and he's like, okay, cool. And then we come back the next day and, he, and he's like, he's like, can you start playing through some of these? And then we start playing. And, the, and then after a couple of days, we're like, is he gonna choose the song? Like, we just need to record one song. He, he came to the conclusion, he said, you know, I think that there's an exciting energy here because, you know, everybody's back, to, you know, James is back and you yeah. guys are getting along and there's like, you're having fun. Like, I think let's record. He's like, I think eight of these songs are worth recording. And so that's how that happened. And 
And because it wasn't really written to be an album, we kind of indulged in some things that we wouldn't normally do because we're like, we're just looking for one song. And, and, and I think Rick, of course, you know, with his production style tended to like things that were reminiscent of the older versions of the band and stuff. Yeah. And so, and so that being the case, when we finished the shiny tour and we talked about doing a new record, I think the, the thinking behind it was that we wanted to do a record to show the world that the band is really back together, not just to tour and make money, but to be a functional creative mm -hmm. entity still. And, and that's why it was, um, you know, decided that it would be 20 songs long, like a double record because the first one was so short that we wanted to show like, no, we're really in this. And then also, yeah, we decided that, you know, and, and, and I'm sure as you know, from going to see bands that especially a band with the history, you know, an older band, it's not like we get to go out and play our new album from beginning to end. Mm -hmm. If you're going to play bigger shows or festival shows, it's very much expected that you have to play quote unquote classic, classic material, which, which is, and now, you know, we're very happy to do it under this, if we're playing these really big shows. And, and it's great because we have all this technology to do like stage these really beautiful productions. And, and so we know that like, okay, like the bread and butter of our show, the 70, 80% of the show is gonna be this classic material. So if we're gonna work on new songs, we can really just go for it and continue the, at least the, the the artistic part of the band, yeah. like very forward leaning and thinking. So that was very much the thought behind like, okay, let's make a very contemporary modern record. And, but I think if you, I mean, if you know, and if you know the history of the Smashing Pumpkins, the, you know, I mean, the Pumpkins have always delved in this kind of electronic music and new wave oh, stuff. Cool. And it's always been, you know, especially for Melancholy on, it's, it's very much been part of the, of, of the of the aesthetics of the band. And so for us, it's not really that strange. I think as some people, they just kind of want to think of the band as a, in this very narrow width of like, oh, you know, like a heavy guitar, heavy screaming type of band, but that's really never been the case. That's just, you know, the, the band is very multifaceted and has everything from acoustic music to, to middle, uh, you know, to like, like semi mellow psychedelic music to heavy music to electronic music and that's that's always been the way it you know so for us it's not that strange but I know for some people like wow this is a departure and I'm like well I guess but not it's really a continuation I would say yeah more. yeah exactly exactly yeah yeah but that so it's we had a lot of yeah no, so, so it, all that was very conscious so when we you know when Billy was like starting to write the ideas and sharing them with us if we would sit as a band and listen to them if it felt too nostalgic or too much like we said let's just put that aside we'll you know there'll be a time and place for that but let's really focus on things that kind of feel different for us to kind of give us a different challenge of you know making music yeah i, I think it's quite a success because i i was i was yeah. I hate songs uh today the, the the because the full album is coming out the 27th of november yeah and uh i mean it was it's so I, I would say versatile because that you you have some that you have the idea of you were talking about most people uh, have sometimes like just a massive rock band but also the synthesizer parts uh, makes it like sometimes darker and even sometimes futuristic you know at some I'm some yeah. songs which is like amazing because you have some bands that that you know were rock bands and uh, are more like using the synthesizer um more like you know that than they use guitar in the past but you guys are really combining like the futuristic part of of you know the the modern rock history and combining what people love about about the pumpkins music which is great on yeah that yeah you know and it still has that i think kind of if you had to characterize the band you know what like in, in a in a description that characterizes everything, it was it has that kind of like a dark beauty. Yeah, you know what I mean. And and that even if it's heavy, there's a kind of a a beauty to it that's not that doesn't make Smashing Pumpkins a true like a heavy metal band. Mm -hmm. You know, what I mean, it has you yeah. know, and um, and I think that that's why where this album is is almost like quintessential Smashing Pumpkins because it I think 
that idea is throughout the whole record. That yeah, I mean, I, that's yeah. A, to me at least that's a total success, and I can't wait. I yeah. I know it's difficult to imagine some touring stuff, and to if tours are going to happen anytime soon. We really hope that would be the case because the festivals are reading for you guys, you know, next year. And hopefully, I know, uh, yeah, I see you in Paris and drop you like a 59 less pool in your rig, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I know that would be so fun. Yeah, yeah, that'd be just so great. But uh, no, I mean, we, we obviously, it's, it's, it was not, I, I don't want to say it's disappointing because the world is, you know, it, it, we, you know, we were very excited to play the shows we were going to do and and me personally like this summer we were supposed to play eight shows with Guns N' Roses and mm. and I've been blessed enough throughout my time in the band to have played you know at, you know like from theater shows to arena shows to headlining festivals to late night tv shows Madison Square Garden you know these kind of you know, historic venues throughout the world. And I've been very lucky, but I was really excited to do those shows with Guns N' Roses because, you know, me being born and raised in LA and, you know, and I, you know, I was in junior, you know, like junior high, starting high school yeah. when Appetite came out. And that really, I was already playing guitar but I learned every single song off of Appetite for Destruction. Oh, yeah. One of the best you know, of all times, in my opinion. Yeah, and a, and a great, as you know, someone, you know, a great rock record to learn how to play, you know, because yeah. Slash's solos are, they're, you know, they're so melodic, but he's, there's some good licks, you know, it's, it's very much, he had his own vocabulary, but then also drew from the vocabulary of, you know, a past kind of blues rock guitar playing and the songwriting's great. And it was just, so I learned a lot how to play rock guitar from that record. And so, and I, and I have been lucky enough to see them even on this reunion yeah. earlier. And, and I, you know, I'll be totally honest. My, my, our a guy who, you know, one of the crew members that works for, Pumpkins also works for Guns N' Roses. So when the, they came through town, he said, hey, you want to come to the show? And I said, yeah, sure, of course. And I asked my buddy, yeah, hey, you want to go? And he's like, he, cause I knew he would love to go. And then the day of the concert, I started going like, oh my gosh, they play like <laughs> four hours. Oh yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know if I can sit through a four hour con. That's yeah. a long time. You know, I don't care, but you know what? It was one of the best concerts I've ever seen in my life. And like, wow. Like the longer it went on, almost, and they started playing. I'm like, oh, that's right. They haven't even played this song yet. They haven't played this yeah. song yet. And Such it, a disco it, rock, it was, you know? That's uh, it, yeah. It was phenomenal. Oh, it yeah. really was. It was phenomenal. Was that I, in I 2016, 17, maybe? Uh, I think it was like the part because I saw Guns and Rosie, and it was also one of the best shows of my life. I think 2018. I think 2018. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, so, and I, I saw them. I think in 2018 in New York City. Yeah, and uh, it was. Yeah, I probably saw them by the time they. I probably saw them then a few days later because it was in Chicago, so it probably wasn't that far off. Wow, and it was like. You know, you you always expecting like, do you know where you are from accent? You know, like, and he's like, and he really had it that precise day. He really had it, and it was killer. And uh, yeah, I think uh, Lenny Kravitz was opening, which was like an okay first opening part. You know, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, yeah. I don't think when I saw this, there was no opening band in Chicago. Wow. Okay. I don't, I don't think so. I don't think so. Yeah, yeah. I don't think so. New York, they probably gave it a special. Yeah, you know, because of new, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I flew six hours. They can give me a special trip. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Jeff, I, I, I can't, I can't thank you enough for being part. You know, and uh, you know, you gave, you gave me uh, some of your time today. And um, of course, of course, I, I just can't wait. You know, to to meet you in person in Paris and. Uh, just to show you around and um, and show you some great uh, vintage guitars. You know. Yeah, you know, I actually, you know, France is very you know, near and dear to me. I, I, I'm, a, you know, I love, you know, the people, the culture, mm -hmm. you know, I, when I was in, in graduate school and even I always studied like French literature and French film and, 
you know, I, I just feel it. And obviously the, the food and culinary culture is, is just second to none. And so I'm very much, I always look forward to going like, like very much. Like it's always like, I can hardly wait to go. Yeah, but so be, be our guest, you know, next time we will take care about everything. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. I, I mean, I'll take you up on it. You know, we could do all my favorite things, which is basically coffee, eat and guitar. Okay, so I mean, <laughs> what we can do, you know? <laughs> yeah, 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 so yeah, thank so. you. And, and uh, next time you see Billy, say uh, hi from the guy who, who that he, 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 you know, that that was that was beating on the, you know, the marshal that from KK Dunning. So you can uh, for bidding over me on that. <laughs> yeah, no. And, you know, when we when we go through town, I'm sure he'll be interested in stopping by your store too. Because, yeah, you know, uh, I almost yeah. buy one of his guitar recently. It was like a '55 Les Paul Custom Black Beauty that he, I think. Oh, uh, the wild. one with the uh, with the tremolo. Yeah, with the, the big, big, big yeah, yeah, the yeah. the Neil Young guitar, basically. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, great yeah. one. Yeah, it was great. One. It sound, I play. Yeah, it sounds cool. Yeah, I mean, I, I we didn't get it, but I'm sure we we will at some point, you know. So yeah, yeah. Thanks again, Jeff. And um, okay. the new record is is out in two weeks, Sear, uh, in November 27th, uh, and I just can't wait to hear the full thing. Great, wonderful. Okay, thank you. I wish you a good day, man. See you soon, brother. Okay, yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank I'll you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Okay, bye. Bye.